Hello, everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome, one and all, and also particularly welcome, my co-host for this outing. Hello. You are? Elisa. Thank you. Also known as... Come on, this is a plug. What am I plugging? You're, you're, Maven, you're Maven of the Eventide. Oh, yes, I have a vampire show, because if you watch this sort of stuff, you must also like vampires. What happened last time? Because I know this is our second time playing through the game, and the first time we played <laughs> things very prim and proper and, and true to life, and now we're being a little bit more brazen. Yes. A little bit more hussy. Last time I played the game, I played this character very strategic, doing what I thought was smart and wise and careful to get ahead. And now we're just and to being... Not... Yeah, now we're now we're gonna have some more fun with it. So last time, I mean, we as the fun game, as much fun as you can have during what, the Regency. Regency. <laughs> yeah. I always want to call it Victorian, but it's Regency. Previously in the game, we danced with or met three men at a dance, and now the game is telling us what outing do we want to go to. And in case it's not subtle enough, it's letting you know which man will be at which outing. So it's, yeah. it's really about which man do you want. Yeah, it's to like go who for. do you want to bone at the end? So and it's like it's kind of like dating simish in a way. And the last time we played this game, we chose Captain Blake because Ooh, our friend ooh. Arabella is into his friend. You Kern, did it because of the high cheekbones. <laughs> I did it because I wanted. She she was so into him. She was like, uh huh. You want this one? This one? Let's he go to a dinner looked party. Mostly yeah, like yeah, Colin yeah. Firth, so you chose him. <laughs> That's why you chose him. <laughs> Fine. All right. You win. You win your Firth crush. So it's between Lord Stanton, who was was that the guy who was all like, oh, you danced with him? Oh no. Yes. Lord Stanton's the bad boy with a bad reputation, the gambling guy. And Mr. Amesbury is the new one, like the expansion pack guy. Yeah, but he also seems the most normal. He's the normal guy. He seems kind of boring. Guy. So I feel, I think Stanton would be a little bit more fun. Oh, I would never choose that in real life. Of course, this is the perfect time to do it. All right. All right, so let's go is down. Decision I also have you know that while Elisa does the voice for the narrator and... For Elizabeth uh, Shanson Smythe Smythe, <laughs> <laughs> which will never not be funny. I do all the rest of the voices and I can't remember what they were. Uh, and we're also already about a glass of wine in and it's been a long day. So whatever. Your voices will be fine. Oh, yeah, you'll go. You'll do this funny good thing, mate. Our friend very much wants us to choose the dinner party with Captain Blake because Captain Blake's buddy is who she has a crush on, but we're not going to do that because screw our friend. We yeah, want, we're in this for ourselves. We want this bad boy you with the bad reputation. You go get reputation. your own bow. Yeah, if you want right. Colonel Foxley, you go get him yourself. So we're going to the afternoon tea. Afternoon tea with the lascivious and... Uh, Gambling, uh, Lord oh. Stanton. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's a gambler. Yeah, okay, let's go his with Lord Stanton. His father's a gambler, and hint, hint, he probably is one too, but it wasn't stated outright. And knowing yeah, Jane Austen a, tropes, I'm sure he's like, has a bad reputation, but a heart There's There's something. a story behind yeah. this. There's a misunderstanding somewhere that could have been cleared up if someone would have talked to someone else. I think the afternoon tea. Blimey! Are you certain Lord Stanton may be there, but now you've spoken to him once, you may not be able to avoid the acquaintance. Oh, Dawn! <laughs> A lot, Dawn! Arabella, you advised me not to fret, but now you are. Her worry shifts to a small smile. All right, as you wish, then. Can he really be so bad? He seemed like a perfectly respectable gentleman at the wall. Arabella gives an unladylike scoff. Puh! <laughs> was indeed unladylike. <laughs> yes. Most things I do are quite unladylike. This matters have nothing to do with his reputation. I just do not wish to see any slander fall on you due to his careless interactions. I understand. Bitch. Really? This doesn't seem like a choice that you would make at all. It seems a little OC for you. It almost feels you. like you're being controlled by some outside force. And we have no reason to converse with the man anyway, so I do not expect it should be an issue at all. <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah. She picks up the invitation to the afternoon tea and then stands from her seat. Stands in her seat? I shall let Johnson know to inform them of our acceptance. I give her a nod and she leaves the room. She is nowhere near as happy as she was last time he went around and went with Captain Blake. Yeah, because she loves his friend. Oh, yeah. Mr. But I'm Foxy. really curious because in the last version of the game... She fell for Captain Blake's friend, and the whole time we were like, but Arabella, what about the guy you came here to marry? And she was like, oh, forget about him. And we never got to find out who this oh, guy was yeah. or what the deal was Maybe now that. that she won't fall for this other guy, mm -hmm. we'll learn more about Now we can about, actually find mm, out about her story, because her being into this guy who she's not quite engaged to yet, but plans to be is the whole reason we came to town. 
That afternoon, we arrive at event rooms to see who else decided to attend this gathering. As soon as we step inside, we are accosted by Miss Claire Witter. Hello, Lady Ashbourne. Miss Shenson Smythe Smythe. We all dip into curtsies, though Miss Witter's rather more animated than ours. Just don't double dip into curtsies. It's really bad party etiquette. Isn't the most thrilling thing? This may be my first time attending these events on my own, you know. She's like 14. Should I make her a more higher pitch then? <laughs> I don't know. Well, except for the presence of my aunt, who provides a little more of the complaints than everything we do. But now you have both arrived, and I believe this will be our most splendid afternoon. Indeed it shall, Miss Witter. Arabella obviously sees a new friend in the girl and sidles up to her. Oh, now Arabella has a new love interest. Oh, that's adorable. Aww. Is there anyone of note here yet? No one except you, Lady Ashbourne. Oh, this oh. <laughs> flirtation is adorable. Well, I think it does go down this route. That'll be cute. I doubt that it Aww, will. Oh man. Arabella glances in my direction, a pleased smile gracing her lips. Oh, I do believe we shall get on very well, Miss Wit. Oh, she's blushing. Oh my goodness. But she's 14. Is that, like, legal in Regency? Um, maybe for girls? I guess... Probably that kind of relationship was illegal then anyway. <laughs> the small group of us head to one of the vacant seats and settle ourselves in. It's not long until we have been served our tea, accompanied by a selection of fluffy delicacies. Ooh, meringues. Are you here for the marriage match, Miss Witter? That is what I hope, but I've seen no one yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> she went uh, all cockney. Am I, am I, well, she's cockney now, dear, right. because I want to do that accent. You can't stop me. That is off in the way. The conversation is suddenly halted as the room falls quiet. Blimey! <laughs> I turn in my seat to see what everyone has decided to stare at. Dun dun dun! I soon discover the quiet is due to someone only now entering the hall. Who could be? Far later than what should be acceptable. Oh, oh, it's fashionably late. Faux pas! It's not hard to distinguish its Lord Stanton merely from his tall stature alone. Oh, he's tall. That's it, he's tall. Yep, that's it. We love him. Word. <laughs> As he steps inside, there's the faintest twitter of whispers before everyone returns to their conversations. Before I do the same, I manage to catch Lord Stanton's eye. Do you throw it at you? <laughs> <laughs> Palmed it. He smiles at me and dips his head in a formal greeting. Can I have my eye back? <laughs> <laughs> so, it wasn't even that funny. I know. More wine. <laughs> you gotta edit this out. Uh, uh, I may. <laughs> I return the gesture, when suddenly I feel a hand rest on my arm. Elizabeth, would you care for more tea? Well, that's another penny in the jar. I turn back to face my companions and order Terabella's question. You know Lord Stanton, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe? We have not been formally introduced, no. Abella soon changes the topic of conversation. Oh, trying to drive us apart. There are many eligible men about, Miss Witter. It seems to take a year of searching to find them. She laughs softly. <laughs> How are you, Lady Ashbourne? I heard there was talk of a possible engagement. Word truly spruits fast. I'm afraid that that did not come to fruition. Oh, again. That's, that thread is dropped in this. Oh, really? Well, apparently. And that, when that thought what happened last time, or were they still engaged? No, no the, the last, last one, we kept being like, what about your engagement? And she was like, I'm really into Colonel Foxley now. And then she didn't wind up going for So in this it. alternate in this one, history, it's just the, like, she's just like, no, whatever. Yeah, and this one, it's dropped as well. Interesting. So maybe Lord Amesbury is the only one where something happens with it. Weird. So does that mean Arabella is going to hook up with Miss Witter or get someone else? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she'll just be the dowager. Maybe she'll just be wingman this time. Actually, she was a pretty good wingman last time. Because she was always like, oh, let's go out of Foxley. And then while we're there, uh, uh, your Captain, what's his name? Blake. Blake. I don't want to call him Captain Blythe, but I think that's like a pinafore you thing. You think it's Smythe. 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 Samson Smythe. Smythe. She doesn't seem affected by it in any way at all, but still. Was it an imaginary boyfriend, Arabella? Oh, it was like, I didn't want to get married, so I'm just going to pretend I had a guy out of town. I'll just say I'm sorry. I'll be polite. Oh, Arabella, I'm sorry. Why did you not tell me sooner? Since we live together <laughs> and tell each other everything. Best friends, all the time. besties, right? Or is Miss Witty your new bestie? I did not wish to curb your enjoyment of being back in society. 
She hands me a teacup with a bright smile. Do not look so concerned. I am not broken hearted in the slightest. Why did the match not progress? Arabella shrugs her shoulders and shuffles back in her seat a little. He is not a fan of being in society, and our life together would have been spent mostly in the country. Oh, yeah, dump his ass. And though some may value the peace of that life. She throws me a knowing smile. It is not what I wish for my future. I enjoy the crowds of the town too much to surrender that for marriage. It's a fact that would be difficult to deny. Arabella is truly in her element amongst the crowds. As a conversation dwindles, I glance about the room noticing Lord Stanton is not amongst the chattering people. Would he have left already? The welcome he received was not the most cordial. The thought is forced from my mind as Arabella and Miss Witter grab my attention once more and we'll talk of the latest London fashions. It's a couple of hours before I'm left to myself. Miss Witter most insists upon Arabella meeting her tiresome aunt. Taking a walk about the room, I hear no conversation that tempts me to join, so continue on. Peering down a side hallway, I begin walking down it, exploring the event hall as far more interest than forced pleasantries with strangers at the moment. Halfway down the corridor, I catch a whisper of voices and find my feet following the source of the noise before I can stop. The voices, now made clearer to be angered ones, come from behind a small door. See, this storyline's more exciting already. I'm about to turn away when I recognize one of them is Lord Stanton. He's got a knife in his hand. I'm clearly already into him if I'm like, Ooh, where is he? Where is he gone? Where is he? Oh, oh noticing him. You know, I'm stalker. Yeah. See, last time I played so coy. It's so weird to see her so forward. You press your luck to call on me here. Oh, he's like Southern. Oh, yeah. He's a Southern gentleman, this man. <laughs> southern. Just came British in off a riverboat. <laughs> my dare size, so dare say, you I slap you with my glove. Pistols at dawn, friend. Mystery man. Oh, um... Have no worries, my lord. I was careful enough to go unnoticed. <laughs> we were most anxious to know if you'll be attending the house tonight. I am there every night. Why should this evening be any different? Stanton's voice holds an unmistakable tension. Kind of sounds like kind of like Bing Crosby in a way. <laughs> the boss will be pleased uh, with you being such good friends now. The boss, eh? Yes, I'm sure his wallet is most excited by my presence. That is unfair, my lord. You cannot blame your bad fortune on my good employer. He does not force those in his establishment to gamble. He only provides the option. Stanton gives a dis derisive snort. <laughs> That's not derisive. <laughs> That's uh, even less derisive. There's only so many ways I can snort. And this is Daddy Pig. <laughs> we, watch, we have a two-year-old. Me know Peppa Pig. Yes, the man's practically a saint. There is a silence so tense it seems to batter me even through the closed door. Until tonight then, my lord. The sound of the door opening and closing echoes from the room, and I realize the conversation is over. Throwing my glance about the hallway, I am dismayed to find no hiding places. The couch. Under the couch. The door before me opens, revealing Lord Stanton, whose face tenses in surprise to find me. Miss Shanson, Smythe Smythe, what are you doing there? Be obliged to ask this here. You... Ooh, that's a little bit too forward, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's, like, would... it's just not my house. I yeah, and it's like, what are you doing talking to that other person when I'm here, obviously? I would do the middle one, I yeah, think. Yeah, normally, this pretending to have gotten lost is probably what I would normally naturally do, so I'll yeah, go against but my I think inclination. Him being... I'll just be bold and be like, look... I know what you I heard everything. Now, yep. right now we're like going to be murdered. You know too much. Miss Jensen, my smile. I grew rather tired of the small talk in the hall, so I decided to walk about. I overheard rather angered voices, and I came to investigate. I understand. Curiosity is a natural trait for all of us, is it not, Miss Jensen, my smile? <laughs> he's going to kill me. Yeah, he's got a knife. I smile at him in gratitude of his understanding. Miss Shanson, knife, knife. I mean, Smythe, Smythe, knife. He, he offers an arm towards me. Shall we return to the hall? We proceed down the hallway together, and I speak to break the silence. You have discovered my name, I see. I believed it was only fair, as I was sure someone would be quick to inform you of mine after the ball. I give a small nod. <laughs> And along with my name, I am certain you have heard my most scandalous details relayed to you. 
My expression drops a little at his words, giving answer enough. I see. If I'm going to go politician, I must well just like go full JFK. Then you have overheard just <laughs> moments you ago. Go back can- to giving him a nice, sexy voice. Then you have overheard just moments ago cannot have come as much as a surprise. <laughs> like a 1940s southern radio announcer. <laughs> Great. This is Howard Cosell as Lord Stanton. You are very open and most keen to make light of it all. What use is there in doing otherwise? Though I wish my affairs could be my own, that could never be the case in today's world. What with you live blogging and Twitter <laughs> using and book facing? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Oh, but I have the nerve to say it. It is a fact I have grown used to. I would care very little of what others say of myself, but that it should have an effect on my family is what concerns me most. Before we can speak more on it, we come to the entrance of the hallway, which opens back into the hall. A few people glance in our direction. I can feel Stanton tense beside me. I shall take my leave of you now, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe. It would be unfair of me to tarnish your good name, or for the want of more of your fair-minded company. Mm, so thank you for your consideration, so I'm like, yeah, you should probably get the heck out of here. Yeah, that's probably what I would choose. So what let's choose you something, would choose, exactly. Yeah, let's choose something different. I would not mind if you stayed. No, I don't want to be too for their forward. opinion. Yeah, care a little. Yeah, make it about them, not about him. Yeah, don't, yeah let's, let's like, not be too... Because according to my tragic backstory, I already ruined my own reputation like two oh, years what ago. Was your, what was your backstory? I forgot. Um, that I fell in love with someone, or no, no, I was frolicking around town and not paying enough attention to trying to get myself married and miss my chances, and people thought I was just like... Oh, like, like at 18, Egypt. you're the crazy cat lady? Yeah. Since I didn't really give a crap then, I'm, I'm older and wiser now, but maybe in polite company I can admit that I don't give a crap now. Good. All right. I care, I care very little for their opinion, Lord Stanton. Please do not worry on my behalf. But it is indeed difficult not to worry on your behalf, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe, when you are so accommodating. Look, dude, I do not need you man protecting me. <laughs> I can make my own choices. Thank you. I hope we meet again under less strict supervisions. Oh my. Hey. I slide my hand from his arm when he gives me a polite bow before he moves off toward the exit of the hall. I watch him leave, all the faces that had turned up on us now returning to their own conversations. <laughs> the cough, cough. <clears throat> Elizabeth, did, did you not care to take my advice? I stare at Arabella as she rushes to my side, whispering as she approaches. Not only do you care to be seen with Stanton, but the both of you are emerging for such a private place. She gives a small sigh before a mischievous <laughs> smile curves her lips. And why were you down in such a shadowed corridor alone with Lord Stanton, may I ask? Explain what was overheard. I got lost and he my, walked me back. Is my dress on backwards? See, normally I would I would tell Arabella, but she just lied to me no. about her whole... I don't oh, think Arabella's yeah. ready to know the truth yet. I, I don't think we should say it's my place to say because that's too scandalous. Some I think the middle of the room... Yeah, because yeah, it's an I'm obvious little, lie. I'm a little miffed at Arabella right now, so you know what? One lie begets another. I reported the hall and went to explore, but as soon as I became lost and Lord Santa was kind enough to escort me back to the hall, I smile at her knowingly. She, she knows. Obviously. I may not have told her everything, but what I said was not necessarily a lie, either. I suppose that was most courteous of him. Though next time I advise not wandering off in unfamiliar places and bumping into such tempting-looking men. Oh, Arabella oh, thinks he's tempting-looking. I think she's a little jelly. Oh. I laugh at her words. <laughs> and we turn to head back to our seats. I smack her square in the face. After an hour more of conversing with people who are more interested in my personal life than what I'm saying, we finally can return home. Mm, she doesn't seem very happy in society. The next day, I'm pleased to find that we have no engagements planned, so I have an opportunity to recover from the last one. Oh, such a toxic tea party. Where's my comfort? <laughs> oh, I wonder if uh, Lord Pendleton is going to be part of this again. I wonder like if he's that. like the villain in every story. I think this guy is his own villain this time. Oh. No. I don't want to give away too much for people who want to play the other storyline, but Pendleton's great. It's not even Pendleton, so they won't even know who you're talking about. Was it Pendleton? What was his name? <laughs> yeah, totally different name. Who's Pendleton? There's nobody named Pendleton. There's no? There's you no just Pendleton? imagine that. In every story like this, there's always a Lord Pendleton. 
When I play this game, I'm making you Lord Elizabeth Shanson Smythe Pendleton Smythe. What's wrong, Arabella? You have not settled for the last hour. Arabella continues to frown as she paces in front of the window. She's really worried for you. I have forgotten to pick my orders up from the shop. Her frown deepens as she draws to a stop. But my chores are too many to retrieve it, and I cannot ask, ask Johnson, as I sent him out already. He will not return for hours at least. What chores do you have, Arabella? And you're pacing in front of the window, you can't just go out to the shopping. No, and... see, the last one was really well written, and this one seems to be this is too obvious a story contrivance. It's like a fetch quest or an RPG. It's like, I cannot leave my house, but you need to go out and slay four kobolds. That's what it is. It's a fetch quest. We're going to go run into Lord Stanton and shit's going to go down. She throws herself down onto the seat, pinching the bridge of her nose. Get up off your ass, Arabella, and go out and get your stuff. Yeah, all the chores you're doing wandering around the sitting room. I slowly close my book and set it down on the table. That was a terribly veiled way of asking me to pick up your baggage. She rolls her head to the side and smiles at me. It's only because you know me so well, Elizabeth. I'm sure to have fooled anyone else. And tell me what it is I'm retrieving and where it is I am to go get it. From Lord Stanton's place. Arabella pulls herself from her seat and places her arms around my shoulders. I could not ask for a better friend, even if I should have had sisters. It's not far to the jewellery shop Arabella made her order with, and I pick up her new brooch with a little fuss. But However, the warmth of the sun and the unusual quietness of the town slow my steps to a wander. I pass the shops, staring at the wares, sparkling necklaces, shimmering ribbons, even a pair of blue satin boots which catch my eye. None are enough to tempt me out of the bright day, though, and I continue on with little thought to my path. It's not until a thick shade makes me shiver that I come to my senses, finding myself in an unfamiliar and less than pleasant looking Ooh, side she's street. Across the train tracks. Straighten myself out. I continue forwards as best I can. Oh, she's gonna get accosted like Lord Stanton will come out and be like her, like, eh, no. Oh, great. A rape rescue. Yeah. That's just what we needed. Great. It's the head, isn't it? But as I walk, the people sitting against the aged walls stare at me. Is she like in Game of Thrones now? <laughs> Some shuffling to their feet with curious and far more inspecting glances than I would care for. This is the fancy society town. Like, who are these derelicts? No, there's always a crappy part of town. The, the, the gambling district. The, the vice district. Thankfully, few interfere with my path and I can see familiar buildings at the end of the shadowed street. Well, what a rare thing to see. I quickly come to a stop as a rough-dressed man steps out in front of me, blocking my exit. Excuse me. I try to pass him, but he moves in front of me once again. Call it Unnerving Stranger. Uh, my name's actually Irving, but people call me Unnerving. No, no, no need to be in such a rush. His gaze drops to the package in my hand. It's a brooch. How big is this package, and why didn't well, I put it in my pocket? In jewelry box. Why didn't I put it in my pocket? I'll see you in town and search for ways. <laughs> Kajuit wants to sell you wares. <laughs> <laughs> what are you buying? <laughs> More wine. He grins, a mouthful of blackened teeth revealing behind his cracked lips. Just so happens I have some beautiful items as a distinguished woman such as yourself will be interested in. He gestures to the side where a splintered wooden box is placed, a variety of dulled necklaces and brooches thrown inside of it. I want to say out of my way. Mm. I'm being bold. Oh, that's right, you're being... Okay, got it. I'm no shy, blushing flower. Out I'll of my way. Whap you on the head with this brooch. I lived in New York for 15 years. I can tell it like it is. <laughs> Move out of my path. With an angered frown, I try to bypass him, but he takes a wide step to block me again. No need to be like that, miss. The man's hand snaps out and grips my arm before attempting to drag me over to his box of wares. Just take a closer look. My attempts to struggle free are useless, and just as I'm wondering how much damage my soft shoes would do if I slam them down on his foot, a familiar voice rips through the alley. You there! <gasps> oh, FMV, sort of. We both whip our heads around to see Lord Stanton striding towards us. The man's grip on my arm falters and looks over Stanton's stature and stern expression and continues to keep hold of me. The young lady and I were just speaking business, which is none of yours, sir. 
Stanton gives a stiff smile. Liverpoolian I am. The lady already seems to be encumbered with goods. Let us not force more upon her, shall we? Though he keeps smiling, Stanton's grip on his cane tightens in warning. Ollie's gonna smack a bitch. Uh. The stranger costs his narrow gaze between us before he finally shoves me away. I suppose there are better customers. Uh, indeed, I'm sure there will be. Shall we proceed on, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe? I take his arm, hoping he won't notice my fingers trembling slightly, and we walk at a fast pace down the alleyway into the relief of the main street. I don't understand what his game was. He just like is if you look into the box, like do you get hypnotized or does he shove you? He into was the going box? to force me to buy cheap crap. No, a fate worse than death. When my nerves have settled, I turn to face Lord Stanton, who has a rather casual air considering what just occurred. All right, like, impeccable there's... timing. Yeah, I'm not that. mad at him because no, no, no. This guy he, was not gonna let me go. You, I knew yeah, he totally saved your bacon and brooch. Your most impeccable timing, Lord Stanton. I am most thankful for it. Your cadence is unnerving. <laughs> you are stalking me, aren't you? <laughs> it is not always so. I assure you. Though I am glad it was such today. Our gazes seem to be locked for a moment. It's not until I feel heat rising to my cheeks that I manage to glance away. He clears his throat, a strange silence beginning to fall between us as we walk. Though I know little of fashion sense these days, I would advise against seeking goods from that street in the future. It was not my intention to find that street. I was picking up a package for Arabella when I found myself wandering further than intended. Though your advice would suggest you know that street well... You insinuating some? His brows pinch together and quickly looks away, his arm tensing beneath my hand. Whatever emotion has made him so uneasy soon passes to be masked with a smile. Hey. I was simply walking past the alleyway when I heard that man's rather unsavory voice. Unsavory with you. Mm. Yeah, when he talks to anybody else, he's like, Hi there. When I saw you in the shadows, I realized what must be happening and made my way to you. He was forcing me to peruse his wares. <laughs> no, these are not tiffy at all. Oh, I'm fainting. My eyeballs are burning. Are you often so vigilant about ladies in distress? I give a smile, hoping to lighten the conversation. It is not an unusual pastime of mine. But the opportunity to walk with you was too tempting to let that pass by. This time I am unable to hide the blush on my cheeks. Stanson seems surprised by his own bold words and fixes his gaze ahead of us once again. You are quite unlike any lady I've ever met in society, Miss Shanson Smythe Smythe. There's a reason they kicked me out for six years. Yeah, yeah, this is like, I'm trying again. This is like my society summer school. Oh, how so? Tell me more about myself. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me how wonderful I am. You are quite the puzzle. Quite the mixture of traits I see in so few people these days. With the Facebooks and the Twitters and the blog and... <laughs> With the Tumblers. Maybe I should develop a clearer idea of you if you were to meet here more regularly. Oh my. Also, the very fact that you do not seem the least perturbed walking with me in public says much. You truly seem less concerned with others' opinions and interested on forming your own mind. That's something that put people to see someone's character. I would never have anyone tell me what I should believe. My opinion is mine. It will never be swayed by what others say it should be. I am most glad to hear it, especially when it's such benefit to me. Psh, don't think this means you're getting any. <laughs> it just means I'm choosing Not my with own that mind. Hat. I raise a brow and questioning at his words. Oh my. Had you taken the views of those around you, I would not be able to enjoy the benefit of your company. Then it is of benefit to me too. Oh, she hasn't stopped blushing since she started talking. She must really like bad boys. Oh, this is the swarthy type. Once again, I find it difficult to look away from his capturing gaze. It's not until the rattling of a carriage beside us makes me blink and we both look away from each other. Oh, look at him. Oh, 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 oh. They're Twitter-pated. <laughs> a few minutes
minutes later, I continue the conversation, realizing it is not long until we reach my house. You speak of society as though you despise it. So why attend events at all? It's not society that I dislike, just the vile glee they take in bringing down others so quickly and with so little knowledge of truths. I think that's the point of the, all these Jane Austen-esque scenarios. It's always like, society is awful, we're the special snowflakes the same plot, that can like see above every, the bullshit. Like movies from like 1930s on, it's like some sort of misunderstanding that could just be solved by asking, but then instead everyone just sort of assumes it's like oh i heard this happen well i'm going to divorce him right away without a second thought or even asking him he'll just serve him his papers also my family enjoys the outings even with being so tarnished in their own reputation for the fact of merely being related to me i thought it was his father that was a real gambler and he was just sort of like a baby gambler mm, do you think it's just guilt by association or do you think i mean because he was caught walking down the seedy street well and he was also Mystery guy was like, will you come to the gambling house again? He's like, if I have to. And he's like, we're not forcing you. And he's like, sure you're not. So there's some sort of blackmail or something going mm, on here, I think. Maybe. Or there's some, like, like kind of sucker him back in, like he's in recovery, like Gambler's Anonymous. If you're so concerned with their well-being, then why participate in such things that will cause them harm? It's difficult to phrase the question, but I can see he understands my meaning by the downturned expression on his face. Oh, look how droopy his oh, face is. Oh, dour. Some things are not so simple. You have an addiction. I have a problem. All right, so that's pretty much, he just, I guess we've pretty much figured out, yes, he does have a gambling problem. Yeah, it's just like, well, why don't you just stop? Yeah, ex yeah exactly. That's not how addiction works. Something. I'm still gonna say it just to see how he reacts. Oh, like just like think about think about your family. Yeah, just stop. Like if if you, because he seems like there's more to him, and he's not just like gambling's great. I no, love gambling. This I don't is the care. kind of thing you hear from everybody. It's like, oh, think about how it's gonna affect your family. But you should probably appeal to him more personally, because otherwise you're just like, oh, you should stop doing it. So. All three of these are pretty. They're probably pretty awful. Yeah. I would. I think the top one would lead more to him talking about his family. I think the second one is the safest one. And no, that would but be a little some bit more things friendly. is so vague, whereas this is saying your family's needs are worth more than that, whereas this is some things are worth well, I know, but all their family's needs are that they, they want to be like all prim and proper. And no, he's like if, he, if, he's gambling, if he's gambling away in their inheritance, then it's more than that. It's more than prim and proper. Look, he at, could way, be, look at the way he's dressed. He, he might could be, be ruining big. their lives. No, Arabella said something earlier about them like ruining their lives with losing all their money. So. Oh, okay. All right, fine. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. It's bolder. I'm being bold. See, it's only because you have a memory and mine doesn't work and you remember that there was a family thing. You obviously care for your family. So shouldn't you put their needs above your habit? For a moment, he remains silent before turning his heavy gaze back to meet mine. Keep your damn mouth shut. It is a shame you cannot know the extent of what you say. Oh, I could if you told me, sir. Oh. I open my mouth to ask what he means, when suddenly he draws to a stop. This is your residence, is it not? I wonder for a moment how he would know, until I notice Arabella eagerly peeking through the curtains at the windows. Yes, it is. I have much enjoyed our walk and conversation, Miss Shanson. Smy Smythe. I don't believe that for a moment. It has been many years since I've talked so freely with someone outside my own family. Back in the days when people just couldn't talk to each other. Yeah, and it's like, so how was your day? Bop, 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 bop. Back to you, need a point. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, coffee? Would you care to come inside for tea, Lord Stunt? It would only be fair to do so to thank you for your help earlier. For some reason, I feel rather eager to keep his company. Oh, my. Even though I'm being... A bit rude to him, but you know, gotta show him that I like him too. Uh huh. Well, keeping it real. Alright, okay. Yeah, throwing a throwing mm -hmm. throwing a bone. I shake away the thought and glance up at him. That is most kind, but I'm afraid that I. He shifts uneasily on the spot before giving me a smile. I'm afraid I have another pressing engagement. It's then that I notice he is turning something over in his hand. Dice. It's a business card. One with four card suits drawn on it. Even after our previous conversation, 
It is the card tables which are on his mind. Of course. I understand. I understand that instead of pursuing a relationship or a friendship, you want to go gamble more? He does have a problem. No, he probably thinks I'm judgmental and I'm going to, like, be one of those people to him. Mm. Which I probably will be because he probably deserves it. He's a (laughs) fixer-upper. I can fix him. I can change him. (laughs) I can solve his addiction because love is the answer to addiction, and that always works. Yeah, that's what we. That's what we. That's what's our plan with the original. Uh, the the captain. What's his name? Blake. Yeah, Yeah, because he was all like quiet and reticent and shy, and it's like we can fix him. Yeah, no, no. There's always more to these guys than you think. It's not about them being bad and needing to get better. There's always some sort of manipulation or trick or villainy going on that is beyond their control. Mm, so maybe there is blackmail involved. That's my... Never their is. fault, is it? I pull my hand back from his arm and turn to stand before him. Oh, I'm being really a judgmental, aren't I? Another time, then. Most definitely. That wasn't sincere. I don't think he gets it because he's smiling. He's like, okay. His smile falters a little, which is what I can only guess is shame. Before he dips into a deep bow and strides off back in the direction we came. Back to the alley! (laughs) I watch him leave, a small pang of disappointment lodging itself into my chest before I turn and head away. I thought I could fix him in five minutes. Oh, that's a shame. That's his gambling is still more important than anything. The moment I enter the drawing room, Arabella nearly pounces upon me. I was truly faint with worry when you were gone so long. I'm sorry, I've caused you more alarm, Arabella. Arabella. I move away from her and take a seat calmly, letting her curiosity stew for a moment. Oh, wow, she's been a little bit more cruel this time around. It's only a few seconds before she can take it no longer and throws herself onto the seat next to me. Oh, do not be so silent, Elizabeth. You must know I saw you and Lord Stanton walking together, public. I found myself in trouble and he helped me. Enjoying each other's conversation, was only a I found myself in a little trouble, and he was kind enough to stop and help me. Are you hurt? Are you ill? Do not worry, I'm quite well. He simply offered to escort me home after, and I couldn't very well refuse. Something tells me you wouldn't have even if you could have. I do not dare to think what you could mean. <laughs> She places a gentle hand on my leg, true concern on her features. Oh my. You will be careful, though, won't you, Elizabeth? Enjoying the scandal of others is one thing, but I would not forgive myself if you would have become the topic of it. The prying eye of society can be a terrifying thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to remind you of your own experience. Zing! That is past history now, best laid away with my poor Rupert. But even with everyone said about him, you still proceeded with the marriage. I did, but I may have been foolish, but sometimes I regretted it. Still, I won't forget what we had. And didn't he die in the last one? No, he's still dead. Oh. He's dead. But we, we know he was a cheater and a, and a scoundrel, and he treated her bad, but yet she still loved him. Oh, and then she's she like, a very I, like I want to have traded it for the world. Yeah. Then you of all people should be less harsh in your judgments, only because of what others say. That was my decision. I did not want to see you married or live a life of such uncertainty. You talk as if I'm tied to the man, Arabella. It really was only a walk. I know, but sometimes a walk can lead to greater things, like running or jogging. She pats my leg and smiles to break the unease of the conversation. Just tell me you will be careful. I shall be. All right. Then I am pleased. You will be even more so, I imagine, when I give you this. I hand the package so she sent me to get, and her face is instantly brightens. I quite forgotten. She tears open the brown paper, a delicate glimmering brooch falling from the shreds. Is it not the most dazzling thing you've ever laid eyes on? I give a small laugh, happy to see all her previous concerns drained away. Oh, all right. So, uh, quite a bit happened here, but actually, no, not even all that much. I think it was just two situations where Stanton just sort of came in and was like, hey, let me rescue you because I'm a bad boy. Let me help you out. 
I exist, and by being next to me, you're ruining your reputation, which could ruin your whole life, because we're in Regency well, times, and I that's mean, how it rolls. Her reputation's already kind of, like, down, as it were. So but it's this like, is her chance to regain her reputation. But this is her chance really to make a new... Re- well, that's that's what we've decided. Okay, so this is now canon for Elizabeth Shanton's Might Spy. We could have made her want to work harder to regain her reputation and not gone for Lord Bad Boy. Intriguing. Okay, so let's do this like a uh, a choose your own adventure. So I'm I'm curious what you guys are thinking in the comments. So we keep going down the route of having her be like, uh, you know what, my reputation can't get much worse. I don't want to be back in society. Screw it. Let's follow my heart. Or should she be all like, but no, I want to rejoin society, but I like this guy, but I can't because he's... No one's going to tell you to do that. I don't know. There might be a lot of really proper Regency fans out there in the YouTube comments. I'm more thinking like, look, we can be friends with this guy. We can help him get his life together. We can like be... Fix like, him. No, not fix him. Just be like, look, I'm in society. I'm one of them, but I'm here for you. If you, I'm here to prove to you that they're not all awful. That doesn't mean we have to fall in love and have babies, but I'm here to show you that we can all be cool. So we'll do it like again, like we did with uh, Captain uh, Blake. We're just sort of like, I'm off to like, it's cool if we can be friends and see what happens, but we're not going to like throw ourselves at him. It's like, oh, or should we? Because that's not what we normally do. All right, so we'll pick it up next time. Let us know what you want to do in the comments and we will continue this next time. So until then... As always, good night, jelly beans. Good night. Good night, jelly beans.